uh, you put your heart into every shoe and every Mamba moment. Um, it, it talk to us about why it's so important for you to be so involved with Nike and the work we do. Well, I, you know, I think when I first arrived um, at Nike, I remember telling Mark I felt like uh, I felt like Harry Potter when he first arrived at Hogwarts. <laughs> and I was surrounded by sport geeks and like engineers that cared nothing more than about every inch and every detail of the product. And so as an athlete, you know, I cared about every single second, um, how the shoe behaved when I changed directions, the weight of it, the fabric of it, and how that affected the game. And so I was right at home. And the reason why I care so much is because that is a direct correlation to how I play, right? It helps me as a player. And therefore, I must take care of every single um, you know, thing um, when I'm playing out there on the court. So that's why I, I approach it with that much care. Yeah, it's amazing. I, I mean, when we think about family, Kobe is, I mean, I've seen you in the rooms, rolling up your sleeves, pouring the hours in to get it right. I'm sure that gives you the uh, physical advantage, but I bet it also gives you a spiritual advantage. Yeah, you, the conversations are completely weird by the way we don't sit yeah. in the room and say okay i like we're going to do a shoe this is how we're going to do it no like we'll sit down and we'll talk about all kinds of weird stuff like swimming with sharks I actually swam with sharks with eric avar who's, who's been the lead designer yeah we, we went together and we went swimming with sharks because we we're designing the shoe that had something to do with the sharks so the best way to kind of get to know the shoe a little bit is actually <laughs> swim with them and so we do all kinds of weird stuff um but that's what we talk about nature and then off we go can you believe what goes into a shoe? Think about it. Swimming with sharks, part of the formula. <laughs> so we were in New York together in January uh, at the NRF Gala, and uh, and you with me gave Mark Parker, our Nike CEO, the Visionary Award, which was a great experience. And uh, when we were there, you talked a little bit about uh, your admiration for Mark and how you actually look at him as a mentor. And I'm just curious uh, how, why and how you see him as a mentor and maybe um, some other people in your life that have inspired you. Well, we started out our relationship as soon as I arrived tonight. We, we had a really close relationship. And it just blossomed and it just grew. And then once I retired from the game, I started having to make decisions that were somewhat uncomfortable for me because I, I haven't had to make those decisions before. Uh, I called Mark. And uh, we talked on the phone, he walked me through his process, he gave me advice. And, um, and uh, you know, I looked at him, his temperament. And, you know, he always talks about you know, the leadership position. You're not trying to lead, but you're doing your best to serve. And uh, that's something that stuck with me dearly. Yeah. Well, it's pretty amazing to think how many people in the world are inspired by you and you're their mentor. We just talked about that backstage as well. Okay, so a little shift. Um, why we're here. Uh, the uh, conference we're at is, um, the, you know, the theme is reinvention and transformation. And since retiring from the game, you've certainly focused a lot of your time on reinventing yourself or at least pushing forward. And just want to hear a little bit about that. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's hard, right? It's hard to break away with what was, you know, especially when you loved what was. <laughs> it's really, really hard. Um, but you're not fully breaking away from it. Right? You're taking lessons that will learn from that and you're carrying them with you forward. If you look at it from that perspective, it makes it a lot easier to discard what was and then focus on what's to come. And, and that's what I've tried to do you know, with the game and, and for what I'm doing now. That's great, yeah. So what, 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 what motivates you now? What gets you out of bed in the morning? I love stories. Yeah. I love everything about them. I love framing them. I love plotting, I love writing compelling characters. I, mean, you know, I love everything about that. And beyond that, I love the reaction from children once they read the stories, you know, the aha moment. Because it's different for every, every child, right? It's not spelling the lessons out. It's not spelling the story out for them. But it's creating stories in, a, in such a way that they can behave like art. Where you can look at them at eight years old and interpret something look at them again at 15 and interpret something else, and look at it, read them to your children years later, and have a completely different point of view. Yeah, that's amazing. You know, another film night is, you know, we amplify the voice of the athlete, and as I just sit back and 
and, and listen to you. I think, you know, how powerful what you're doing with your voice. Thank you. Uh, so, you were always an incredibly driven athlete and leader on the court. Talk about how those qualities apply in business life. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, a little, it's a little different. Like in the uh, you know, sport, <laughs> yeah, you're constantly driving people all the time. I mean, and, and like, and it's an immediate thing. So, you go out to practice and you work on your shot, and then, you know, the night of the game, there it is, right? Business is kind of a slower process. Right, where you have to figure out ways to keep the, the flame burning, the curiosity burning on a consistent basis for a longer stretch of time <coughs> to then accomplish an end project, which may be a novel, it could take a year to two years to write, which may be a film, it could take anywhere from a year to three years to make. Right? So it's, it, the inspiration still must be there, but the, 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 the rollout of it. I bet. It's not like the game every. <laughs> no, 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 no. You show up Monday night, there's a the game, you yeah. play, you either be great or you'll suck. You'll be one or the other. Yeah. We win, <laughs> we lose. That's it. Move on to the next one, and you are. <laughs> so we're talking a lot as, a, um, as colleagues here at the conference about how retail is adapting and innovating um, with the new digitally based consumer. I feel so, it's like just people. <laughs> Um, and your playing, your playing career spanned an era of immense change for athletes in terms of their social media presence. And, and I think we're all fans of the brand you've built for yourself on social media. So maybe you could talk to this group a little bit about um, how you present yourself and how you think about your brand digitally. Well, I, you know, I, I was always reluctant to get on social media because you know, I figured it was probably going to get me in trouble because I'm a natural smart ass, so <laughs> I probably shouldn't be on social media. <laughs> but, yeah, why not? I'll try. You know? and, and I think the most important thing is to be who you are um, and understand uh, how who you are can impact others. You know what I mean? If you can find a common thread of who you naturally are and find that common thread with uh, a greater message as a whole, um, then it becomes easier for people to understand who you are and relate to you. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk, you probably won't know this brand yet, let's talk about Granity Studios. Yes. Yeah? yeah, I read in the Hollywood Reporter, a very cool article, I think it was just last week, about your um, short film, De Dear Basketball, and it sounds like it's a formidable Oscar contender, again, just another thing you're working on. Um, can you share with us your experience with creating the film and, and building this business up? Well, it's, uh, I, I wrote the film, well, it was a, my retirement letters to the game, and um, you know, I wanted to turn it into a short film, and so I reached out to Glenn Keane, who's one of the greatest animators, and Glenn has done everything from like, uh, from uh, Little Mermaid to Lion King to Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, Pocahontas, and you name it. And um, he decided to take the project on, and then, uh, fortunately, I've known John Williams, a great composer, for years. And so I called John up, and John read the poem and uh, you know, wanted to score the music for it. And so that's how the project came to be. And like to sit here right now to even hear you say that the film is being considered for Oscar nomination is that's crazy. Like, yeah. I don't know. I have and a feeling. That like, stuff. Like, come on. Like, as a kid, I'm dreaming of like, winning championships. Yeah. I'm winning championships. I said, I want to dream. I said, that's what I dream of. I, I don't know. Just a different kind of championship. That's all. It's beyond any realms of any dreams whatsoever. Mark our words. Okay. Um, so, in addition to Kobe Inc., um, you are active in your investments. Tell us about the work you're doing with entrepreneurs and their companies through the platform, and why is this also such a passion? Well, uh, it, it, investing is, uh, can be really, really complex. Yeah. Right? You sit in the rooms and you hear all these terms and all this other thing, it can, be, it can give you a headache. And so the first investment I ever made was in a company called Body Armor, and uh, it was just a sports drink. The reason why I made the investment is because I got to know the entrepreneur. We were just talking. I, mean, I just called him out of the blue and said, tell me how you build vitamin water. I think it's Michael Poli, a serial entrepreneur. Um, and we, I just wanted to learn. And through that process of learning, I was like, well, I'm building a company now. What is it? It's body armor. I was like, all right, well, maybe I'll, I'll invest in that. And then I can kind of learn on the fly. He says, no, don't invest in it. You'll lose all your money. <laughs> I'm like, what? So you should be telling me the opposite? Was, no, I'm going to tell you the truth. Like, you might literally lose all your money. 
And so you gotta think to yourself, like, why would you wanna be a part of it? So I, I kind of weighed out those factors. Do I understand the business? I understand the business, sports street business, I get it. Yeah. Can I help it in that regard? Yeah, I can help it, yeah. right? And you kind of understand kind of the, the, the barriers to entry of the industry. And you kind of measure it some way and uh, decided to go for it. Yeah. Go pretty well. So what do you think uh, investors can learn from basketball champions and what can basketball champions learn from investors? <sighs> Patience. Yeah, yeah. Patience yeah. And, and paying attention to the details. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And that's always the key. Things don't happen by accident. You know, you gotta look at the source of things and understand why they occur. Yeah. That's really important. It's good. It's good. I'm I could ask questions all day long. I want to make sure. I have a couple more, one or two more. Um, but want to make sure that you guys saw uh, to hashtag Mamba mentality. We'll start collecting your questions and make sure we get to those. Um, I, so you've talked about, we've talked a lot, a lot about what you're um, doing and working on. Is there anything that you haven't talked about, about what's coming in here, what we can expect? I mean, eight, eight novels, a movie, investing, what else do you do? Well, I, 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 um, I keep it to those, keep it to those two, and, and you know, focus on building Granity Studios. And, you know, Granity is a word that I um, invented from combining the words greater than infinity. So when I took those words and combined them, I came up with the word granity, which is really about you know, how do you inspire a person to inspire a person that inspires another person. I believe that's how you truly create something that's timeless. That's cool. I'm actually seeing questions come up. Are you good if we... Yeah, yeah it's all good. All right, okay. Uh, okay, a video, I just heard a little bit about his daughter. A video of you and your daughter playing basketball recently went viral. If they asked you how to be successful, what would you tell them? Well, I, I tell them get better every day. That's all. Yeah. Just get better a little bit every day, and yeah. you know, um, there's no secret formula, secret sauce. I mean, that that's it. Yeah. Get a little bit better every day. I, I, we ask, I ask her all the time. I said, okay, at the end of the day, you need to look in the mirror and ask yourself, did I get better today? You know, we were just talking about this backstage. His 13-year-old uh, daughter already has her plans of where she wants to go to school and play basketball at age 13. So I think the get better spirit is highly. Well, I mean, they, you know, they're really driven children, which kind of terrifies me a little bit, exactly. but also, you know, <laughs> makes me very, very proud. Well, you <laughs> should make you proud. Yeah. I like that. Um, what, are, um, what are some driving factors that keep you inspired and drive you to go further? Um, I just love what I do. I mean, that's the thing. Like, you know, I love uh, what I'm doing right now in Granity and the stories that we're trying to build and create. So. That's what keeps me going. That's what keeps me up at night. That's what wakes me up early in the morning. Yeah, I feel like everything you are doing, it just feels so connected. It, it comes from a core belief and ethos around inspiring and teaching and, and storytelling, which is... Oh, it, it's fun. I mean, you, you get a chance to, to, to help the next generation, right? And as parents as well, I mean, it's like... I can tell my daughters until I'm blue in the face, like, oh, you gotta work hard, you gotta do this. And like, after a while, they're like, dude, seriously. Okay, Dad, we get it. So you gotta kinda hide it, you know, you gotta create stories and write stories. So I'll write stories about hard work and dedication. I say, hey, just read this, just read this. Yeah, one of my writers wrote it today, just, just read this, but tell me what you think. Oh, I like it, because she had to really work hard to get through it. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she did. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she did. <laughs> okay, any advice? Oh, okay. Oh. Any advice for making a career pivot? Um, for making a career pivot, uh, well, you take the lessons that you learned from your previous career and you move them on to the next, right? But you gotta, you know, I mean, I, the, the best thing to do is kind of just go. Yeah. <laughs> I think sometimes we kind of think ourselves into, into Overthink it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you just go. You go and you figure it out. You won't have all the answers, but you, you'll come up with them as you go. Okay. All right, since so it's kind of slow. Uh, I was telling Kobe back to the uh, work and you know your belief when you get up in the morning, the way you think about teaching and coaching kids. I was just saying, gosh, I wish his books, his his uh, movies were around for my kids when they were younger because I think they they of course inspire kids in sport, but I think they inspire kids in life. And, oh, oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah, as a parent, you gotta you know like you have kids that play sports. What bedtime stories you gonna read to them? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I can't. I can't keep it. Cat in a hat. <laughs> you know what I mean? They, they, they love princesses with like enough. You know, you know. 
you got to have where the sports princesses. Where's that stuff? <laughs> exactly. Where's the magic?